At St. Lawrence College, we understand that every student faces challenges unique to them. For some, these challenges can affect their studies, mental health, and sense of security. The Student Rights and Responsibilities Office is one of the college resources that can help you through challenging personal situations to support your well-being. Launching complaints, seeking an academic appeal, and reporting concerning behavior on campus are just a few of the many functions the SRRO regularly guides students through. Assisting students with matters of sexual violence is no different. Taking the first step in reporting an act of sexual violence or misconduct can be scary. Where do you go for help? Will you be judged for speaking up? Will reporting a situation negatively impact your immigration status or your academic standing? If you have had any of these thoughts, then you're not alone. The reporting process starts with a confidential intake meeting with a Student Rights and Responsibilities Office staff member. After the intake meeting, you will have the opportunity to formalize your reports with the SLC Safety and Security Department. You will be informed of your options, such as being referred to students' wellness, connecting with community resources, or having the Safety and Security Department launch an investigation. What happens next depends on how you choose to move forward. Either way, you'll have access to support programs and be guided through every step of the process. If you change your mind, you can choose to end the process at any time. Choosing to speak up can be difficult for everyone, but this may raise additional challenges for international students. The fear that reporting an incident of sexual violence will negatively impact their immigration status or academic standing is a common misconception. Making a report will not affect the student's immigration status or academic standing. The student controls how their case is handled. The police will not automatically be involved when making a report. The International Office is also here to support students with any challenges they might encounter while studying abroad. International student advisors can answer questions about studying in Canada while also helping you engage with campus community, adapting to different cultures, and much more. They serve as an additional doorway to connect students with resources from the college and surrounding communities. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Loud and clear, Miss Naisa. All right, thank you so much. Thanks, Jalu. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. My name is Naisa. I'm with the Playboard, and together with me is the school representatives of St. Lawrence College and Vanstro College, which I will introduce later on. And of course, I'd like to thank MSA Immigration for hosting this event. Also, we are streaming live on MSA's Facebook page. So please do take the time to visit, like their page, and share this um, live stream to your friends who will, won't be able to join us this afternoon. So before we, I introduce our school representatives for today, just a bit of housekeeping. So make sure that your mics are on mute while the presentation is ongoing. If you want to keep your camera on, it's fine. Just, just be mindful of the internet challenges that we are experiencing, just to make sure that everyone will have a seamless experience. And, and while the presentation is happening, if you have any questions for our school representatives, and of course for Jalu later on, then we will be answering them after the after all presentations, just feel free to type them in the chat box. So our, present our presenters for today, we have with us Oliver Bata from St. Lawrence College. Hi, Oli. Good afternoon. Hi, Naisa. Hi, Jalu. Good afternoon. All Hi, right. Ina. And <laughs> and of course, as introduced by, by Oli, we have with us Ina from Fanshawe. Hi, Ina. Hi, everyone. And of course, later on, uh, Jalu from MSA. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. All right. All right. Okay. So without further ado, we will start with um, Oli. Okay. Ready when you are? 
Okay. So, shall I begin now? I said. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, let, let's see if you can share your screen. There you go. All right. Yeah, can you see my screen now, Naisa? Yep. You can see it. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Oliver and I'm from St. Lawrence College. So we are a designated learning institution, meaning all our programs are eligible for the postgraduate work permit. Meaning if you study for one year, you get to stay and work for another year. And then if you study for uh, two or more years, you get to stay and work for uh, up to three years. So we're located in Kingston, Ontario. So that's in between Toronto and Montreal and right below Ottawa. As you all know, Ottawa is the capital of Canada. So we have three campuses. Our main campus is the one in Kingston. So it's uh, about three hours away from Toronto, two hours away from Ottawa, and three hours away from Montreal. Another campus is in Brockville, which is an hour away from Ottawa, which uh, it's the closest to Ottawa, and then two and a half hours away from Montreal. And lastly, our campus in Cornwall, which is the closest to Montreal, uh, about an hour and a half hours away, uh, same distance as that of Ottawa. So this is our campus in Brockville. So it's located in the world famous 1000 Islands region. So the Brockville campus offers a beautiful small town atmosphere in a close knit community with a cafe style student commons, a large student lounge and a brand new library learning commons. So the Brockville campus offers plenty of space for students to study, relax and spend time with friends. So among others, you'll find there the Brockville Railway Tunnel, which is Canada's oldest tunnel and then there's also Brockville Art Center and the world famous 1000 Islands Boat Tours. And this is our campus in Cornwall, which is located uh, on the shores of the St. Lawrence River. So students can enjoy studying or lounging by the river, and then they can also enjoy the water views uh, from the library, residence, and classrooms. Uh, and for your information, uh, Cornwall has the lowest rent in uh, Ontario. And then recently, the city of uh, Cornwall has been included in the OINP or the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program. So this allows the government of uh, Ontario to nominate individuals for immigration to Ontario. So the OINP is one of the most varied and dynamic of Canada's provincial nominee program with streams and categories designed to welcome skilled workers, business migrants, and of course, the international students. And lastly, our campus in Kingston, which is located in a, in a mid-sized community, which is safe, friendly, and affordable. It is also located in a beautiful waterfront that offers outdoor activities and urban amenities for an active student lifestyle. So some quick facts about Kingston. So it's the first capital of Canada, and it has a population of 170,000. It has a high quality of living, uh, but as for the cost of living, it's quite low. In fact, it's about 40% cheaper as compared to other major cities like Vancouver, uh, Toronto, or Montreal. And being a mid-sized city, it is safe and friendly, and there's less competition for jobs. And then recently, it has been named as one of the best cities in Canada for millennials to live. And it's also known to be the hockey cradle of Canada. And then Kingston... Uh, it's also known to be a college or university town. So aside from St. Lawrence College, you will find their Queen's University, uh, the Royal Military College, and the Limestone District School Board. So these are just uh, some of the facilities that we offer. We have like our esthetician classes, our multimedia classes, our, of course, our health and science. Then we have our skilled trades, uh, like welding and fabrication, uh, carpentry and automotive. 
And then we have excellent athletic facilities, you know, including cardio room, weight room, and gymnasium. And we also have double gym, outdoor atrium, and deck, uh, which uh, features one of the nicest basketball courts in Ontario. And then as for recreation, um, throughout uh, the academic year, various recreation events and, uh, and drop-in activities are held at each campus. So this includes uh, staff versus student games, uh, Super Sports Saturday, paintball trips, uh, Student Appreciation Week, Spirit Day, among others. And then our li uh, libraries provide extensive uh, online and print materials, information services, and study workspace. So we have our experienced staff who are available to help our students to find the information they would need to complete their assignments or to research other interests. And uh, currently, since the campus is still closed due to, due to the pandemic, we are offering our 24-7 online access to all SLC students and employees. So this includes uh, e-books, audio books, and digital magazines. And students can also do online streaming of videos, including new movie releases. And then uh, St. Lawrence College offer a wide, a wide range of support services to their international students. So we have like our, um, our student association where students can just uh, spend their free time here and interact with other students during their breaks. And then they can play billiards, uh, table tennis, and even watch Netflix. As for student uh, wellness and accessibility, we have like our we have our campus health center, uh, wherein students can do appointments with physicians, nurses, and dentists. And then we have our counseling and accessibility services. Uh, so normally. Uh, when a student is overwhelmed with academic, personal, or financial concerns, so we have our, our counselors here who can assist them. And uh, this per, uh, confidential personal counseling is available to all SLC students. Then we have our academic support center, uh, which is a free services available for one-on-one -on -one or group tutoring sessions. And this can be done on a drop-in basis or by appointment. And then already included in the tuition fee is the health insurance provided by GuardMe. And then we also have our, uh, uh, already included in the tuition fee is the, uh, is the bus pass where students can just ride the buses for free and then this can take them anywhere around Kingston. And then we also have our SLC carpool program where students can just uh, sign up and ride with other students and even with faculties. And then in terms of diversity, as you all know, uh, Canada being a very diverse country, the school is represented by about 45 countries. So the entire student population is about 7,500, 1,500 of which are international students. And currently we have uh, about 70 Filipino students. And then uh, in terms of the KPI or the key performance indicators, um, we normally belong to the top five in terms of the graduate employment rate and the graduate satisfaction rate, which is uh, higher than the provincial average. And this is due to the fact that the school itself we have our own placement center, uh, which we call the uh, SLC Career Services. So basically they connect, uh, uh, what they do here is that they connect our graduates, uh, our graduates with the employers of their chosen career path. So the career services, uh, offers a range of free resources, uh, including resume and cover letter assistance, uh, interview preparation, job search coaching, uh, individualized career coaching, on-campus job, uh, on job fairs with local and regional employers. And then they regularly po uh, post uh, jobs uh, on the job board with hundreds of opportunities in Eastern Ontario. And then they also do interview stream, uh, which is an online job interview preparation tool. And then these are just some of the partner companies that uh, we had tie-ups with. And then we offer three types of housing. So we have our 
uh, on-campus residence, which is the SLC student residence. So basically this is like a dormitory uh, located right beside the school. And then we have our homestay where in students get to stay with a Canadian family. So it's like having foster parents. And lastly, our off-campus housing or more commonly known as uh, shared houses. And then at St. Lawrence College, uh, we offer more than 70 programs to our international students, ranging from one year certificate programs. So among the more popular programs here are our business program, the medical laboratory assistant technician, or the med tech, or, and then we have our personal support worker and uh, culinary skills. Then we also have our two-year diploma programs. So the more popular programs here are our business programs, our computer systems technician, and game programming for the IT enthusiasts. And then we have our early childhood education. So for students who want to pursue a, uh, a program in education, and then we have our mental wellness and addictions worker and social service worker for the psychology graduates. Then we also have our health and science programs like the health information management and the environmental technician. And uh, we also have fitness and health promotion. Then uh, we also have our hospitality programs like the culinary management, uh, hospitality per se, and uh, tourism. And of course, our skilled trades programs, which is the most in demand and the highest paying jobs in Canada right now. Then we also have our three-year advanced diplomas, uh, advanced diploma programs. So we have our advanced uh, business programs. Uh, we have the uh, behavioral science, uh, civil engineering technology, uh, computer programming and analysis, and the biotechnology advanced. Then we only have one uh, four-year bachelor degree program, which is the Bachelor of Business Administration. And lastly, the postgraduate programs, which is the most popular among our uh, Filipino applicants. Um, so we have our user experience design, and then we have our uh, two-year business program, which is the Business Analytics International. And then the, uh, these other uh, one-year Postgraduate uh, business, uh, postgraduate business programs like the digital marketing communications, the international business management, uh, project management, and supply chain management. And then we have a we also have a two year uh, postgraduate program uh, that uh, which is the healthcare administration international, and we also have the autism and behavioral science for the psychology graduates and the therapeutic recreation for the PT graduates. And then recently, the school came up with the graduate certificate program pairs. So these graduate cert uh, certificate program pairs have been specially selected to complement each other, uh, as well as the skills and learning experiences that the student uh, will enjoy while attending classes. So by attending two sequential uh, graduate certificate programs, uh, students uh, can be eligible to increase the duration of their postgraduate work permit. Um, just like what I mentioned earlier, instead of only attending one graduate certificate program, which could result in a one-year PGWP, uh, student could now be eligible for a PGWP of up to three years. Moreover, uh, applying for these uh, graduate certificate program pairs uh, may increase the duration of their study permit. So as you can see on your screen, these are just some of the program pairs that we are offering. We have the digital marketing communications plus project management. We also have the user experience design plus digital marketing communications. Then we have uh, the project management plus supply chain management. Then the project management plus international business management and the digital marketing communications plus uh, project management. As for tuition fees, uh, our our tuition fee, uh, fees uh, range from 15 to 16,000. So basically that's uh, uh, 7,550 plus ancillary fees per semester. So, so that goes for all our uh, diplomas, uh, advanced diplomas and uh, postgraduate programs. 
and then uh, apply bo uh, apply board and MSA being our partner agent, we are waiving the hundred Canadian dollar application fee. Then in terms of uh, as for the admission requirements, uh, we would only require a copy of the passport, uh, your high school or college diploma, your high school or college transcript of records, and uh, we're already waiving IELTS or any other English proficiency exams. And then we're currently offering uh, scholarships to our applicants. So we have our, our Regional Academic Excellence Entrance Scholarship, which is a merit-based uh, scholarship. Then we also have our Canadian Experience Scholarship for students who are able to complete their secondary schooling in Canada, and the St. Lawrence College uh, Loyalty Scholarship for, student, uh, for students who, who wish to pursue another program at St. Lawrence College. And with that, I'll leave you a short clip about St. Lawrence College featuring our uh, president and CEO. Hi folks, it's that time of the year again. We get to welcome new and returning students to SLC for the start of a new academic year. And whether this is your first post-secondary experience, or maybe you're joining us to continue learning and upgrade your skills, you should know that SLC is committed to providing an environment where everyone feels welcome and that they belong. I also want to welcome staff, faculty, and community partners. Many of you are long-term members of the SLC community, and I'm excited about continuing to work together to help our college and our students succeed. When I look at the coming year, there's so much to be excited about. The great team in Student Services has refreshed student wellness and accessibility services to better serve our students and to continue the important work around reducing the stigma associated with mental health. SLC has also started the conversation to create a center of excellence that will change the face of hospitality and tourism education in Eastern Ontario. And our objective to continue honoring Indigenous ways of knowing and being will help us to continue to grow as a community. All this and more contribute to make me feel very proud to be SLC. Here's to a terrific school year for everyone. I can't wait to see you in the halls. So that ends my presentation. So if you need further information about our programs or about our school, uh, please feel free to visit our web page. Uh, you can scan the QR code on your screen and then I'll, I will also be around to answer all your questions during the Q&A session. So thank you, Nisa. Okay, thanks so much, Ollie. So again, everyone, if you have any questions for Ollie and St. Lawrence College, about St. Lawrence College, uh, please feel free to type them in the chat box and we'll go through them after all presentations, which brings me to the next presenter. We have with us Ina from Fanshawe. Hi, Nisa. Hi, Jalu. And hi, Ollie. It's nice to see you again. Yes, finally. <laughs> Yes, so and good afternoon to everyone who's joining this webinar and also those who are tuning in in the live stream. So again, my name is Tina and I'm the International Education Advisor of Fansho for the Philippines. Let me just share my screen. All right. Okay. So just to give you some quick facts about Fansho College. So we are one of the largest public colleges in the province of Ontario and we have 50 plus years of experience already. Same goes with St. Lawrence College. We are far away from Toronto Airport. We are located in London City, which is two hours away from Toronto Airport. Um, and later on, I will be sharing with you the arrival service that we provide to international students because we understand that not all of our international students would either have family members or friends who can pick them up in the airport. In terms of our student population, we have 22,000 full-time students and 7,500 of them are international, representing 104 different countries. So right now, uh, Philippines is actually the second biggest market or country in the international student population of first school. So as a Filipino, for sure, ang gusto natin is that meron tayong kilala or, or kababayan uh, that you will meet in, um, in a new country or a new place. So for sure, you will meet 
probably one, two, or five Filipinos in your program. And also, the Filipino community in London City has already been established, and that's because of the increased number of Filipino students studying in Paso. Also, I just would like to share with you one of our biggest accomplishments in 2019. We have the highest um, graduate employment rate of 90.3. Um, in the province of Ontario, which means our students, within six months after graduation, they have jobs already. So this just somehow resonates the fact that our programs, most especially our student services, are really focused to make sure that you're job ready by the time we you finish your program. Because I understand that as an international student, your goal is to transition from a study permit holder to a work permit and eventually a permanent resident in Canada. So just to give you a quick overview of our program, so we do have 200 plus programs across 17 areas of study that we provide to international students. So just to give you some of the top I mean, popular programs that um, Filipino students would usually apply in Pancho, majority of them are taking business programs, community studies and education, culinary arts, health sciences, IT, nursing, science and engineering, and also tourism, hospitality, and recreation. But for the past few intakes, we've also seen an increased number of students studying from av for aviation, construction and trades, design and arts, media, and also transportation. And also, aside from the program offerings that we have, you can finish um, with different credentials in Pancho College. So we have degree program, which is four years, post-secondary certificate is one year, Diploma is two years, advanced diploma is three years. And if you want to do skills upgrading in Canada, we, we can um, consider taking graduate certificate programs of either one year or two years. So with the program offerings that we have, it's already posted in our website. You can also book an appointment with MSA to find a match, matching program um, based on your interest and also your credentials. Um, just important. One of the most important information that I would like to share with you is that if you study any full-time program in Francia College that we offer to international students, it's all, all eligible for a post-graduation work permit. Our one-year, two-year, three-year, four-year programs are also, like SLC, are eligible for a post-graduation work permit because we are a public college in Canada and we are a designated learning institution. So all of your investments, um, may, uh, all of your investments for your education in Canada, in Pancho College, will not be put to waste because, again, they are all eligible for a post-graduation work permit. So in my next uh, part of the presentation, I would just like to share with you uh, the top three reasons our current students considered um, in choosing Pancho College after school of choice um, in Canada. So the first reason is that London City has a lot in store for you, especially if you are an international student. If you're alone or with your family, London City is actually a good place for you. So just to give you um, an overview of the jobs available for our students and also for their family members. So um, our city's location is near the US and Canada border. And of course, if you are in the border, um, that opens up a lot of opportunities for trades, business, supply chain, which of course translate to jobs, either part-time, full-time, and also um, I mean, summer jobs as well. Also, if you are bringing your um, spouse with you, they can um, work full-time while you are studying, and they can also uh, get, de get these opportunities for jobs. Uh, right now, we have 15,000 companies, small, medium, and large businesses in London, and that, of course, will help you. And to look for jobs, we have job sites such as Job Bank Canada, LinkedIn, Indeed, and also very important, if you are a financial student, you can get, uh, get, get to know these opportunities through our financial career service center. Also, being part of, um, of Ontario, you have, um, you're able to do part-time job and the minimum wage in London is 14 cab per hour. And also across the jobs available in London City, um, if you are particularly looking for jobs that will land you for part that I mean for permanent residency pathways, uh, the national occupational classification among jobs present in London would actually fall under Knock Zero A and B. 
Aside from that one, uh, we have very affordable living costs in London, either if you are um, going to Canada as a single student or if you're traveling with your family. So the average cost of a single occupancy bed space in London would range from 380 to 450 CAD per month, and that's inclusive of rent, utilities, and Wi-Fi already. Also, if you are bringing your family and you're a family of three, four, five, um, you can consider getting a two-bedroom apartment, which is around 1,343 per month. This is actually uh, very affordable as compared to uh, big cities, especially cities in Greater Toronto area, because the single bed occupancy in Greater Toronto area cities would be around 600 to 800. And for a two-bedroom apartment, that can actually cost you a lot more. Like close to 2,000 or 2,500 Canadian dollars. So uh, this is the reason why a lot of our students prefer living outside the Greater Toronto area because you it's very practical and at the same time you have access to good quality education at the same time. Also, the average commute time in London is 22 minutes. It's very um, it's a big yeah. difference uh, in the Philippines. Yeah. Okay. All right, I hope we can uh, mute that participant. And also, um, bus pass is available um, for our students. It's actually part of your um, tuition and fees um, if you are taking any program in London City. Also, healthcare is within reach. So we have 23 plus walk-in clinics and the number of hospitals in the city, including the second largest hospital in the province, which is Victoria Hospital. And again, your health insurance, you don't have to pay for it on top of your tuition fee because it's already part of it. Um, and that covers hospitalization, medical procedures, consultation, even dental and vision. Uh, you are covered with insurance if you are a FAMSU student. The second reason why um, Filipinos um, study in FAMSU College is that we have work integrated learning within our programs. So, um, in our programs, when we develop our programs, we do practice experiential learning so that we want to know the knowledge and the skills needed by the industry. So probably here in the Philippines or in other countries, whenever, um, like for example, the Ministry of Education, like CHED, DepEd, or the schools create programs, they normally just tap in the academe and the subject matter experts in, cre in creating the curriculum. But it's very different in Canada and also in Pancho College because aside from the academe and the subject matter experts, we also get the recommendation and the side or suggestion of our industry partners. Why? Because they are your future employers. So we want to know what type of skill sets they are looking for for their potential employee. We also want to know um, what are the uh, technologies that they are using, what are the facilities that they have right now so that we can incorporate that on how we deliver our programs. And of course, that will be an advantage for you when you um, finish your program and look for jobs after graduation. Aside from that one, our program curriculum is developed to ensure synergy with professional associations. And of course, we want to be certain that our graduates acquire the necessary industry designations and certifications when you finish our program. So for example, if you study a project management program, um, you can be a PMP um, certi uh, certified after graduation. Or let's say if you will apply for our um, professional financial service program, you can actually be a certified financial planner in Canada. So we want to make sure that our uh, the subjects that you will take in our programs will help you um, land the designations or the certifications of your chosen field. And also, one of the best um, practice that we have for work integrated and learning is having placements and co-op within our programs. So if you already started your research in studying in Canada, prefer, you will um, come across these two terms, placements and co-op. So placements in Fansho in our programs are shorter in terms of duration and are usually not paid but it will depend on the company or the organization that you're in if they will give you some sort of an allowance. Co-op, on the other hand, or cooperative education, which is also um, included in our programs, um, it's, longer, it's longer in terms of duration. Minimum is four months, 
the maximum is eight months. And also, these are paid internships. So you can actually um, earn while studying, aside from your part-time job. Um, your salary can be higher than minimum wage, or sometimes if the company is very generous, they can also give you the entry-level salary of their company if you are going to, to spend your co-op term with them. Um, just to give you a sample for co-op, um, a successful student graduating from co-op and landing jobs. So this is Maria. She actually did her co-op in 3M Canada. And after graduation, she was able to land a job in Canada um, under their um, under their thing. So the last um, um, reason that I would like to share with you is we also do provide the best support to our students. So um, our faculty and our industry professionals, and they have a very extensive traditional and online learning experience. That's why when 2020, um, when the pandemic happened in 2020, it was a very quick for financial college, also the faculty and the staff to transition quickly in terms of online uh, learning and online uh, processing of, of, of application and whatnot. So it was very um, efficient, um, efficiently done um, about the transition of our students. And also we do provide help for our students if they have any issues or any concerns throughout their, their online learning experience. Also, each program would have its own program coordinators and academic advisors. And if you have a placement or co-op in your program, you have your placement in co-op consultants as well. They are pretty, they pretty much know everything about your program and they want to also make sure that you perform well in your program. So if ever you're having a hard time um, reaching out to your professor, or let's say you are um, you're having a hard time. Um, in terms of, of for a specific subject, you can easily contact them so that they can help you. Also, the facilities, materials, and technologies that we have in the program and also um, in the school are very much in sync with what the industry is currently using. Um, aside from that, um, again, like I mentioned um, in the first part of my presentation, we have an arrival service program to international students. If this is your first time to travel to Canada, so. Um, because of the pandemic, we cannot provide airport greeting, but we still provide uh, a transportation for our students. And if you're traveling with your family, um, that can, they can also be included in the transportation from Toronto Airport to London or to our regional campus if you don't need to quarantine. But if you have to quarantine, we can pick you up from the Toronto Airport, then move you to uh, um, our partner hotels in London City. Also, we cannot provide two nights free hotel accommodation, unlike before, but we have partnered with hotels in London City to provide a discounted rate for our students since they are, they are required to do 14-day quarantine upon arrival in Canada. Also, as an international student, um, we have a team in the International Center uh, to help you with any program, admission, and student immigration-related concerns. So let's say you want to add a second program, you have questions about your part-time job, or you have questions about your study permit, you can easily contact the International Center. And all academic assistance, aside from reaching out to your program coordinator and academic advisors, you can get the assistance from the Learning Center. And for scholarship and bursaries, uh, it's it's offered to international students as well, which is around 500 to 2,000 Canadian dollars and are usually merit-based. So you have to um, finish at least one semester for that, to, be, to apply for a scholarship. And again, please do um, participate and get the services of our Career and Employment Service Center, since that is your one-stop shop access to everything that you need to know about job readiness and employment in Canada. So um, we have career fairs. Well, now it's not virtually. Uh, we also have workshops. We have um, we can help you create your Canadian resume. If you don't have a LinkedIn account yet, we can help you with that. We do mock interviews with you. And also, as a fancy student, you have access to a dashboard that will show you part-time, full-time, and summer jobs available. 
from LEDC and also from our partner companies. The good thing about this dashboard is that you actually have access to it five years after graduation. So even if you're already done with your program with Fancho, if you, let's say, move to another city or you move to a different province, we can still help you in your career, the jumpstart your career in Canada. So for tuition fee and living expenses, which is very important, program tuition and fees um, in Fancho in our programs, which is one year or two semesters, it can range from 16,000 to, to 20,000 Canadian dollars. So once you get your letter of acceptance, the first thing that you have to settle is a 2,800 CAD uh, tuition fee deposit. And then the next payment that you have to settle is the balance of your first semester tuition fee that has to be paid before, um, based on the deadline and also before starting your program. And again, bus pass and medical insurance is part of your tuition fee. Accommodation, specifically off campus housing, can range from 6,000 to 8,000 Canadian dollars. Books and other expenses, it's not part of your tuition fee but it will depend on your program and it can range from 500 to 2,000 Canadian dollars. And for application requirements, if you wish to study in Fancho College, these are the minimum requirements that we need from you. If you're going to apply for a post-secondary program, we need high school, your high school and college transcripts and diplomas and your passport. But if you're going to apply for a graduate certificate program, since the minimum requirement is a degree, you have to provide your college transcript and diploma and passport. No need to submit your high school documents for that. Also, Fancho College doesn't require IELTS uh, or any English test for Filipino students during application. I actually for, um, deleted um, the next part of this one, except for pharmacy technician and occupational therapy program. So those are the only two programs that would require IELTS for Filipino students. Other programs that are under health sciences like practical nursing, gerontology, PSW, healthcare agent management, or other programs in business, IT, aviation, culinary, hospitality, name it. Aside from occupational therapy and um, uh, pharmacy technician, they are not required IELTS. So please uh, be reminded of that one. And right now, we are currently processing applications for any intake in 2022. So that's January, May, and September. And again, since you guys are um, attending this webinar, I will also waive your 100 pen application fee if you're going to process your application through Apply Board and MSA um, if you wish to study in Fancho College. And this is my last slide. If you want to know more about our programs, feel free to check out your website and also our social media page. So with that, I end my presentation and I will be um, staying for the questions. All right, thanks so much, Ina. So again, everyone, if you have any questions for Oli and Ina, uh, please type them in the chat box. I see a lot of the questions now with the same theme, but we will go through them after, of course, when Jalu presents the services of MSA. Hey, Jalu. Okay, so hi, everyone. Good afternoon, and thank you for attending our event for today. Um, let me just share my screen. Okay, so can everybody see my screen now? Uh, yes, yes, we can. All right, so who are we? We are MSA Immigration. We are the people you contact if you wish to enroll with Pancho College or St. Lawrence College. And if you wish to apply as early as now, MSA Immigration, uh, formerly known as Australian Dream Visa Team and was founded by our principal, Ms. Christ Marie Tentia. She's actually a registered migration agent for Australia and now co-directed by Mr. Steve Kilarski, who is um, a Canadian, and Sir Adam Davis, who is a Australian. So um, we have a great balance of team in our um, with our directors because Miss Christ Marie is a Filipina, so we can understand this um, our clients properly with our background. Our main office is 
obviously um, located in Perth, Western Australia, with a regional office here in the Philippines, um, located in Pasig, Marco Polo building in Artigas Center. So those are the two locations of our office. We're looking forward into expanding it and going to other um, locations here in the Philippines. Um, we cater to applicants or clients who are interested to study, of course, in Canada and in Australia. But with Ms. Christ Marie Tentia's um, qualification, we can also process other types of visa for Australia. But for now, we will focus on our student visa assistance in Canada. Okay, so for the next slide, what can we do for you? Of course, MSA Immigration can help you process your student visa in Canada and um, also help you identify the best education pathway for you if you do not have your own study plan or if you are not yet um, decided on what to take or where to go in Canada. So we offer our visa consultation and assessment for free. All you have to do is book with our education counselor for Canada. We also offer complementary services such as the pre-departure orientation to be done when you your visa is already granted. Airport and accommodation arrangement. Oh, yeah. Do not have anyone in Canada to fetch you from the airport or, or you do not have a place to stay while you are in Canada. We can help you with that. Of course, English test exam and review booking assistance, we can also assist you with that. But with our partners right now, St. Um, Lawrence College and Fancho College, they waive IELTS for our Filipino applicants. So next is um, how do we go about the process? So at MSA Immigration, we promise that your visa application process will be fast, affordable, and easy. So fast in terms that um, we can cover these four simplified steps within two months if um, the situation allows. Of course, we also need to consider the amount of time that um, our partner colleges right now or our guests right now um, to take or the amount of time they would take to assess your application because that will also take a lot of time if um, they could not give it right away. So first and foremost, counseling and initial assessment. This is where we would assist you again in finding out the best education pathway. Rest assured, our counselors are very much um, experienced in this industry and they would know what courses would set, we would suggest to you if you are um, running out of ideas or if you do not know what course you would want to take. And of course, with our um, complete package, we will enroll you to your chosen school, for example, in St. Lawrence College and in Pancho College. So all of this could be done. Of course, your tuition fee payment could be done as soon as the documents are available and your funds are also available. And lastly, we will lodge your student visa at the end of your application if all documents are cleared and per assessment of our education counselor. This will be the last step in your student visa um, application. So how much would it cost you? Um, our services, we offer our services for 15,000 pesos. Um, that will cover all the four steps that was shown in the previous slide. Let me just show that again. So it would already cover everything. All you have to do is provide your documents and MSA Immigration will be the one to process all of it. Provide all the documents and um, we will make sure to submit all necessary requirements for your enrollment and your visa lodging. This 15,000 pesos professional fee um, will be paid into installments. So 7,500 upon your sign up with MSA Immigration Services. And then the remainder or the balance will be paid when we are ready to lodge your visa. So that will cover everything and all fees will be transparent. You will have all control in your financials because tuition fee, insurance, your medicals, all other fees will be paid directly to the institution concerned. Okay, so these are a brief um, list of the requirements. You may take a screenshot of it and um, with your one-on-one -on -one booking with MSA, we can discuss this with you in detail. 
and what we need to do with this. For example, if we lack some documents, we can discuss that with your free um, consultation with our education counselor for Canada. So like our partners, we require resume, your passport, of course, academic credentials, certificates of employment, birth certificate, NBA clearance, most importantly, study plan, as some colleges require this upon enrollment, your English exam result, which is already waived by our partners, St. Lawrence College and Fansho, professional license, if your profession um, entails you to have a license to practice it, and marriage certificate, if it's applicable. And most importantly, for your application in Canada, the financial requirements are very much important. So this will depend actually on the type of stream and the stream that you will take. Will be also discussed when you book for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with our education counselor. So um, what else? How can you contact us? MSA Immigration, of course, we have our social media and you can always contact us. This is our website, msaimmigrationaustralia.com.au. You will see everything there that you need to know or frequently asked questions, our services, our client feedbacks, and also our booking page. You may also visit our Facebook page where we are live today, facebook.com slash msaimmigration, our Instagram page, and our Twitter. Um, I forgot to include in this slide, we also have our Instagram, um, LinkedIn, for those who are most fond of using LinkedIn. And um, you may contact us any day, um, except of course Sunday, but you may drop a message and we'll see to it that we will answer it right away. We are very responsive with our um, client messages and client inquiries. Um, so here, you may book your um, consultation with us through http msaimmigrationaustralia.com.au slash appointments. You may take a screenshot of this so you can you won't forget. Or you may just um, scan this QR code. It will lead you directly to our booking page. And there you will see all the services we have. Um, again, I would like to emphasize that our consultation for student visa is free for everyone. It is not case-to-case -case basis. So let me just go back um, a few slides, actually, here. Meet Eric. Eric has decided that he wants to study abroad in Australia. Congratulations, Eric. Studying abroad and becoming an international student in Australia is a big life decision that can have big rewards. Eric has contacted MSA Immigration Australia because he wants to live in one of the best countries in the world and end up with a university degree from a world-recognized educational institution that will help him succeed in his profession back in his home country or as he continues his journey and migrates permanently to Australia. MSA Immigration Australia knows that this big life decision can often be stressful because it's important to students like Eric and he wants to get it right. That's why we have simplified the study to migrate process into four easy to follow steps. MSA has removed all complication and confusion so that Eric can rest assured that his Mara registered migration agent and QEA education counsellor is taking care of his unique study abroad experience. First, Eric will receive an initial assessment and education counselling session. Our team will then enrol him into his educational institution and get Eric to pay his tuition fee before the final step where MSA will lodge Eric's visa. Once Eric's visa is approved, he can now prepare for his Australian adventure. Uh, okay, so that slide or that video is um, very old already. We need to update that. But the same process applies to Canada as we are slowly partnering with um, a migration agent in Canada. So you can already ask your inquiries um, about study to migrate or your um, opportunities for migration after your course. So for your questions, I'll be um, answering them in the Q&A portion right after my presentation. So 
yeah, um, just type them in and we'll answer everything. Okay, thanks so much, Jalu. So let's bring back Ina and Oli for the questions that we have here. So the first one, I'm going to start with Jalu on this one. So hello, I'm 29 years old. May I ask if my age will cause conflict to study in Canada? So Jalu, I'm, I think 29 is still young. Yeah, I think 29 is still young. And generally, schools do not have age limits. But of course, we need to consider... Um, your opportunities after your course. So that will be the consideration, especially if you're looking into the migration side after your studies. So generally, there is no age limit. Mm -hmm. All right. And for Oli, so what's the average range for age for the international students in SLC? Uh, we don't have any age restrictions when it comes to school application. Uh, in fact, we have... Uh, applicants who are already above 40 and, and were able to secure a study permit and are now studying at St. Lawrence College. Mm -hmm. And for Ina, I can't remember what's the oldest student you had back then? Um, it was 52. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, 52, okay. But of course, so for the schools, they have no problem accepting you as long as you satisfy the requirements. But for the visa, of course, you have to convince as well why why you are pursuing and that's that's how msa will be assisting you in terms of creating that um, study plan for you all right so a lot of questions are related to scholarship all right so i'll start with ina on this one so what kinds of scholarships that they can take advantage of okay so right now for sancho for filipino students we don't have entry scholarships that we can give you when you receive a study permit approval or your loa but after you finish your first semester in sancho you can apply for any scholarship that we provide so um it's usually merit-based and um if you want to apply for a scholarship i would recommend for you to aim at least 3.0 and above for mm -hmm. your GPA. All right. And for SLC, Ali, welcome back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was that again? Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> No, it's okay. Uh, so it's about the scholarship. So I do know SLC has entrance and um, you have other, um, other scholarships that you need to be enrolled, right? Yes. Okay. So we have our entry scholarship, which is uh, merit based. So students just need to submit their uh, academic uh, credentials and uh, a written a short essay, and they can apply for this scholarship. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Next question is about part time jobs. Is it enough to pay all expenses? So I'll start with Jalu on this one. Okay. So part time jobs, depending on the course that you will take. So. With Fanshawe College and St. Lawrence College's um, tuition fees for their courses ranging from 16000 to 20000 CAD per year, I think your part-time job would suffice. Of course, this would vary. If you have a very luxurious lifestyle in Canada and you spend a lot of your income and you know not save a lot of it for your tuition fee, it will not really um, cover everything or your tuition fee, even for a SEM. So we believe that um, it is enough. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks so much. Uh, so I'll start with Ina on this one. So London, Ontario is actually not that expensive in terms of cost of living, but is it really enough for, post, uh, for a part-time job to cover all expenses? Okay, so um, in London, Ontario, you pretty much use the same minimum wage, which is 14 cent per hour. Um, based on the fact of your students, also the experience as well, probably your part-time job will be enough for living expenses and your savings, but not necessarily your, um, your semester fees. So I would suggest for you to secure your, um, let's say, your program tuition and fees and probably use your part-time job earnings um, for your living expenses. All right. Thanks so much, Ina. Um, Oli? For uh, SLC, like, so Ottawa. <laughs> yeah, just like what uh, Ina and uh, Jalu mentioned, uh, it depends on the student's uh, lifestyle. I mean, it's not enough to cover uh, your living expense, uh, your tuition fee, but in a, uh, 
I mean, it's just enough to cover your living expenses, but not enough to cover your tuition fees. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'll go back to Jalo on this one. So about the fees that Ina and Oli mentioned earlier. So this also impacts the visa application. So uh, what are the things you need to consider when it comes to providing uh, proof of funds? Um, things we consider when providing proof of funds, of course, um, your employment. So financial documents that you need to provide would be your proof of income, either from your business. For example, you have your sponsor. If they have their business, we can use that or the income statement of the business. We can use that as financial proof. Of course, bank statements that um, is showing one year um, tuition fee and one year cost of living in that um, bank account with no less than six months of history. So that is the amount of money that we need to cover with regard regarding our um, financial documents. All right. Okay, so next question for the school reps. So four years college, I'll be eligible to work, to apply for a work permit in how many years? So I, I'm assuming this is the PGWB. So the rule of thumb is one year is to one year. And for two years, it's two to three years. So um, I believe both of you mentioned about programs that we can be bundled up. So we can start with Oli on this one, the pairs. Okay, so we, we're uh, currently offering a program pairs. So these are one-year programs. So by uh, studying these two uh, uh, these two programs, our students can uh, can be eligible for the for a three-year PGWP mm -hmm. and get to stay for up to three years in Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, for Ina, I believe it's uh, you also have the blunt, the bunting program. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. So same with um, Saint Lawrence, we have like one plus one program. So, um, the good thing about that one is that when you lodge your visa application on the onset, um, your visa approval will cover the two programs already. Mm -hmm. So you don't need time for a study permit extension. And again, like what Oli said um, a while ago you can be eligible to up to three-year PGWP after finishing two, year, uh, two one-year programs. All right. Okay. And the pairs or the bundled programs, let's say when they arrive in Canada, can they change the second one? Maybe they change their minds. Let's start with Ina. Uh, yes. Uh, but you have to contact our student life coordinator in the International Center if you wish to change your program. Um, because aside from changing program and your reason to change your program, we also have to make sure that it's available. We have a seat available for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for SLC? Uh, same with Ina, uh, mm -hmm. same with Fashio. I mean, uh, so that can uh, apply for program change and request for program change, but depends on the program availability. All right. So the next question, what if the visa is not approved? So they are asking if the money will be returned. And maybe let's add into the question, what are the options? Can they defer or do they need to withdraw? So let's start with Oli. Okay. Students can defer, definitely defer, or they can also uh, request for refund. So St. Lawrence College will provide a refund of any prepaid uh, tuition fee, uh, less the uh, processing fees. So if the applicant is denied, uh, uh, they just need to present uh, their refusal letter uh, pro uh, provided by the IRCC. All right. And for Fanshaw, Ina? Uh, so same, you have two options. Either refund, um, will we return all your payments, less 250 can add the fee. Or if you really want to pursue um, a reapplication, we can probably request for a deferral. Um, and then we'll give you the new LOA that you can use for the reapplication. Okay, so how many times can they defer? Uh, Ina? Well, from our end, we don't have a limit as long as when we issue your letter of acceptance, the new one, um, you have to, uh, to apply for a visa. Okay, and for Oli, SLC? Same with Ina, we don't have mm -hmm. uh, limits for the ferals. All right. Okay, next question for the school reps again. Planning to study a degree in Canada and after completion, is he allowed to stay and find work there? So the straightforward question answer is yes, <laughs> through PGWP of any program. Okay, 
Next question, uh, we can go to Jalo on this one. Can I bring my family? May I know how? Um, of course, you can bring your family with you. Um, they will be declared as dependents of your student visa or what mm -hmm. we commonly know is as OWT. So we can process that together with you, but we don't um, actually suggest that you process together or simultaneously. Um, it is um, good practice to first wait for the visa of the student before we process the dependents. So that's how we would do it with um, uh, for Canada. Okay, so there's another question about that. Can the spouse work in a different province? So let's say they study in Fanjo or St. Lawrence, but the spouse is maybe in Alberta. Uh, actually, I'm not sure about that because mm -hmm. that's the first time that um, actually someone asked that from our end. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think um, maybe our friends from Fanjo and Oh yeah, maybe you've experienced these, yeah. the, this question, guys. Uh, Oli. Because I have I think, uh, there's no restriction when you apply for an open work permit. So I think uh, uh, the applicant is free to work anywhere uh, mm -hmm. around Canada. Okay. I think uh, safe to say um, you can just refer to the IRCC website for more details because uh, they prefer, they give specific details on these things, or you may get in touch. I believe with MSA, they have a consultant for Canadian visa. So you can actually request that as part of your consultation with them. So at least you're guided. And um, of course you might see some things like this in a DIY website, but I would recommend you take it a grain of salt and still get confirmation because we don't want you, um, you we don't want you getting surprised towards the end. All right. So next question, how can I get a sponsor to, for my study in Canada? I believe it's declaring sponsor, um, Jalu. Um, so declaring sponsor for your study in Canada, it can be your relative. We suggest that you get a sponsor up to the second degree of relationship in your family. So it would be easier to trace. If you will be taking a sponsor who is a family friend, we need to trace the relationship of the main applicant and that sponsor. So we actually need to defend that. And the sponsor would actually need to provide proof of previous sponsorships. If for example, mm -hmm. he or she or your sponsor, who is not your relative, has already sponsored someone else before. So we need that document in order for them to successfully apply. So we suggest that you take your aunt or your parents who are really close to your family. All right. Thanks so much, Jalu. So the next question is second year college taking up business administration in the Philippines. What if I study in Canada? Can I continue my course there? So straightforward answer is yes. But for details, I give you um, first SLC. Ali? Okay, uh, the student uh, finished, uh, was able to finish a, uh, his high school in a K-12 system. Then he's more than he or she's more than uh, eligible to apply. Uh, but if uh, if she he or she is uh, from the old system, he just need to complete a two year uh, of college schooling to to be able to apply. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for Ina for Fanshawe, I believe. So um, for if you're in your second year, if you finish your second year, you can proceed to any post secondary program if you're from the old system. Uh, but for, if you are in the new system, um you can apply to any post-secondary without taking general arts. But if you are looking at, let's say, credit transfer, unfortunately, we don't have any um, credit transfer agreements with Philippine schools. So we have to do everything. All right. Okay. So next question is still about the bundle, one plus one. So can I take the course after a year? So I think that what he means is, do, does does he need to take the program simultaneously first year, second year, or can he or she take a gap in between? Okay, um, for, for our students, we can only allow you to have a break of four months or one semester between two programs. Um, I think that's also the allowed um, mm -hmm. gap for, uh, for international students. If you... Mm -hmm. 
exceed that um, that limit, um, it will also affect your study permit. And if you will apply for one plus one program after finishing the first program, don't apply for PGWP. Wait for the second program to finish. All right, and for for Oli. Yeah, same, 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 same as financial, uh, we only uh, allow up to four months since it will affect the vali validity of your study permit. So, so yes, uh, only up to four months. All right. Okay, so next question is about student loans. So, straightforward answer is yes, you can, but you need to be there in Canada to do that. So, there are um, key banks who offer that student loan, they call it, uh, it's like a line of credit. So it's best that if you have um, relatives in Canada, please have them inquire on your behalf for the requirements. But one of the crucial ones is you have to be in Canada already for that. All right, next question is, okay, so I believe this person is going to work remotely. The company's in the Philippines while he studies in Canada. Will it affect my 20 hours work? Uh, I believe it's a no, but uh, Jalu? I'm sorry, Miss Nays. I was reading a question. When... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it's okay. So, so uh, the student plans to study in Canada but continue working remotely for a Philippine company. Does that affect his 20 hour work? Uh, limit. I for I believe it's not, but Jalu, in your experience, um, I believe it won't. Um, as long as he can balance or he or she can balance her time mm -hmm. for doing this. Of course, if she's employed full time in this um remote work that she's allowed to do, um, it will um not allow her to pursue the part time work. Right. So still with the relatives for sponsorship, what if you're not close with your relatives? Can you sponsor yourself instead or someone help you instead? Okay, uh, Jalu. Um, for this case, um, of course you can sponsor yourself if you have enough money. Ideally, ideally you sponsor yourself, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ultimately, that's the goal. You, you have to fund your own studies, right? So mm -hmm. of course you can sponsor yourself or can someone help you instead? So if this someone can really define, like I've said a while ago, we need to trace the relationship or we need to provide strong evidence that he or she is capable of sponsoring your studies, may it be a friend to you or, for example, um, an employer or someone mm -hmm. from a family friend, they can actually um, sponsor. But again, we need to provide strong evidence that they are capable and there won't be issues with them sponsoring your studies. All right. Okay, so I guess that's pretty much all the questions we have for today. So uh, any last few words? Let's start with Ina. Okay, so thank you so much, Naisa and Jalu and Polly as well for this webinar. Um, and right now, we are processing applications for any intake in 2022. We have a few programs that are already closed for January. So if you are targeting January or winter intake, I would suggest that you get your letter of acceptance as early as now so that you can process the visa. But I hope that you um, explore your options. And if you choose Kanja College as your uh, school of choice in Canada, I hope to see you next year. All right. Thanks so much, Ina. Um, Oli? I would just like to thank everyone for participating in today's uh, webinar. So thank you, Naisa, Jalu, and Ina. And uh, we're still accepting applications for winter intake, so feel free to apply. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. So remember, those seats do get run out fast. So please, if you have decided, I would recommend you apply as early as possible. So Jalu, last few words. Um, of course. Thank you so much, Ms. Naisa, Ms. Ina, and Sir Oli for today. And for um, our interested clients or our attendees, um, hopefully you will now enroll with either of our bigger guests now. And if you are indeed targeting for as early as January or the first quarter of 2022, you need to apply now. And how can you start your application? By contacting MSA Immigration through 
hello at msaimmigration.com. That's our email. And with the booking link that I have sent a while ago. So please book as early as now so we can already secure your letter of acceptance. Okay, and they can also reach you on Facebook, right, Jalu? Yes, of course, through our social media that I have also shared a while ago. Um, just search MSA Immigration across all um, social media platforms, then we will pop up. All right, and don't forget to like MSA's Immigration Facebook page to be updated of other webinars that they have for study in Canada. And with that, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. Have a great day. Stay safe. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.